what are we doing on the show today? We do have something planned, right? Yes, we're talking about worship. Ooh, I love all kinds of ships. Me too. Fellowship and friendship. Spaceships, battleships, baker ships. Wait, that's not a real ship. Don't forget about chocolate ships. You mean chocolate chips? Oh yeah, those are delicious. <laughs> It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, a worship band with a message about worship. And our friend Fruitcake with a new song. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome everyone! We're so excited to have a live worship band here. They all play the worship? Is that an instrument? Um, not exactly. Worship isn't an instrument we play. It's what we do to show God our thanks and love. And music is one way to worship. The band is really great. Let's watch. Wait, why do we need to respond to God? Good question. We worship because we are in awe of Him. You mean like when I look at pictures of puppies and I say, aww? No, more like our God is like super awesome. Right, band? God is awesome. I've also heard God is indescribable. He is, and I'm pretty sure I've heard that song before. We worship to express our joy for his amazing grace. Hey, that sounds like a song too. It is. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We actually have a clip of the band playing that song. Let's play that. Wow, that was great! They know how to make a joyful noise to the Lord. I'm good at joyful noises too, like this. Yippee! Woohoo! Yay! Yay indeed! God has done so many things for us. He's a way maker. A light in the darkness. Hey, that's a song too. Yep, and don't forget, God created the universe. That is awesome. No wonder we respond with worship. Why don't we hear the worship band play their music live? Uh, that's fine. Time to go already? Probably could have had them play instead of um, playing a clip. Good to know. Well, Thanks for being here, Classroom Band and Fruitcake. We were really looking forward to hearing your new song. You can play us out on the triangle. Great idea. See you all next time on Coco Talk. show and tell. Oh cool. What did you bring? Want to guess? Sure. Is it a chicken? Nope. It's round and blue, wears a bow tie, has a great talk show and an even greater sidekick. Wait, am I your show and tell? You got it. I also forgot to mention how super smart you are too. Ah shucks. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Megan the Megaphone, with a message about spreading the good news and our friend Fruitcake with his latest knock-knock jokes. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. Wow, so many people. Hello everybody. Such a big crowd here today. Can everyone hear me in the back? If not, don't worry. A real live megaphone is here to help. Megaphone? Megaphone, megaphone. I love megaphones. They're like the world's largest phones. Not quite. It's like a phone. Uh-huh. Tell me more. It's louder than a phone. I love being loud. And with a megaphone, you can tell big crowds of people your message. Oh, I should ask Megan the megaphone oh, 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 to tell people how awesome you are, Coco. Oh, thanks. You know what else you can do with a megaphone? You can go and tell people the good news of Jesus' love. What do you mean, go? Are you saying I can take Megan Megaphone with me? 
That's the beauty of megaphones. You can go everywhere with them. No matter how big the crowd, your message will be heard. Go everywhere? Oh, I wonder where I'd go and what I would tell. Well, in the Bible, Jesus says, go and tell people everywhere the good news of my love for them. Hey, go and tell. I like that. It has a nice ring to it. Yes, and the best thing of all is you don't have to shout into a megaphone. We can make the messages of Jesus louder just by going and telling it everywhere. Speaking of everywhere, we have a clip of the first time we heard Megan the megaphone. I remember that. Look, you can see me in the crowd. Oh wait, no, that's Sally Sugarcube. Coco, is that you? I think I see fruitcake. We were all there and we all heard Megan's megaphone message of go and tell loud and clear. Megan, what was the largest crowd you... Oh man, Megan, I was really looking forward to you telling us about your travels and fruitcake. Let's see if we can squeeze in one joke before we finish. Ooh, I can't wait for you to go and show and tell it. Talk to y'all next. Talk to y'all next. Talk to y'all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Fruitcake, knock knock. Marsha, notice anything different? Uh, the new art is nice. No, I mean, yes, it is nice. But do you notice anything different about me? Hmm, uh, you look like your same shiny self. And you feel like your same warm self. What's different? Check out my new bow tie. Oh, that's what it is. It's a whole new look for me. Wow, I really think you pull it off. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Kramer the Crane, with a message about building each other up. And our friend Fruitcake with a house of cards. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome, everyone. We're so excited that Kramer the Crane is here. Crane? Like the bird I saw at the zoo? Those birds are huge. No, not the bird kind of crane. This is a construction crane. His job is to build things up. You mean like the way you build me up by saying nice things? Yes, because words matter. When we encourage people, it can make them feel good and stand taller. That's so cool. The Bible does say, encourage one another and build each other up. We all need that. Have I mentioned that you're a good host? Sounds like you just did. You are too, Marcia. Aw, oh, thanks. You're making me feel as tall as Kramer. Also, you're really fun to play with. I was just going to say the same thing to you. And Fruitcake, we love having you around. It feels just as good to encourage others as it does to receive encouragement. Kramer the Crane, you build really big buildings. It's true. You build really big buildings and are a hard worker. I think we have a clip. Wow, speaking of standing tall, that's tall. Good thing you're not afraid of heights. Kramer, that was impressive. What's the biggest thing you've ever built? Oh, sorry we don't have time to find out, but thanks for showing us how to build things up, Kramer. And Fruitcake, we really wanted to see that house of cards you built. Wait, what's that? We have a minute, we have a minute, Fruitcake. Can you quickly show us the house of cards you built? You adorable house builder, you. Hmm, I know you worked on that. Maybe we can build it back up together. Talk to y'all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Talk. Time to take a nap before the show starts. Um, the show's already started. What? Oh, hello. Oh, why are yawns contagious? Oh, no. But maybe we invite everyone to take a break and get a little <sighs> shut eye with us. Marsha? Oh, she's so sweet when she sleeps. <laughs> It's Coco Talk. Today's guests, 
Penelope Pillow with a message about rest. And our friend Fruitcake with tips for camping in the living room. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. Today we're talking about how to re... Hmm. I can't think of the word. It has to do with rest. Recharge? Sort of. Reset? Something like that. <gasps> Recycle! That has nothing to do with it. No, but it's a good idea. Uh, it's re... Uh, refocus. That's it. We're talking with our friend Penelope about taking a break from our very busy lives to refocus and be refreshed in a way that can only come from resting in God. She looks like an expert in the sleep department. Indeed. She knows how to get a solid night's sleep. Rest is more than that, though. It's taking a break from all the going, going, going. But there's so much to do. We need to play, read, color, play, help around the house, and did I mention play? You won't run out of time to play, but being so busy going, going, going isn't the best idea. So we should just stop? Yep, just for a little while so that our mind, body, and spirit can be renewed. Resting in God is trusting Him with what we're not doing. We can take a break because we know God will take care of us. We have a clip of Penelope helping someone do just that. Wow, that seems so peaceful. It is. When we take time to rest in God, it can help us feel more calm. Let's ask Penelope about how to get good rest. What would you say is... Oh, we were so close. Thanks for being here, Penelope. And Fruitcake. Aw, he's... Well, we hope you rest up and come back real soon. Talk to y'all next time on Coco Talk. See any good movies lately? Yes. Have you seen the new superhero one? Um, I saw it with you. Oh, yeah. Forgot. What about the latest animated princess movie? Loved it. I really like animated characters. They are the best. They sure are. It's Coco Talk. Today's guests, Taylor the Towel with a message about service. And our friend Fruitcake with some ideas on how to put others first. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome to the show. Our friend Taylor the Towel is here today. Taylor, uh, I think you have a smudge on you there. And, and there, and a few there. Yeah, she has a few smudges from serving this week. Each one represents an act of love. Is serving always messy? Sometimes, and that's okay. Service can be messy, but it's totally worth it to put others first. I wonder if Jesus got messy when he washed the disciples' dusty and smelly and stinky feet. Maybe. The Bible does say Jesus used a towel. Taylor, is that your great, 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 great? Are you done yet? Great, 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 grandpa? Good question. There's more where that came from. Did you read all the service projects Taylor did this week? She cleaned up glitter from an art project. We know how hard that is and wiped down the windows after some mysterious chocolate fingerprints appeared there. See that spot right there? That's from drying a wet dog's paws. Wow, are you a spot specialist? No, actually Taylor told me earlier. Well, I think she deserves a spa day for all the acts of service she's done. Agreed, and that's what we're going to do, folks. Taylor, we are going to give you a spa day makeover. Fruitcake, help show her backstage, please. From our backstage cameras, we can see Taylor's spa day makeover in real time. Wow, you're going around and around and around and around and around. Ugh. That looks like it felt good. And maybe it was a bit dizzying. It's always refreshing to get nice and clean. Honestly, though, nothing feels as good as surfing. It's putting love into practice. I like that. I wonder what Taylor's favorite way to serve is. Great question. Taylor. What is your favorite way to serve? Ah, oh, bummer. We're out of time already? Thanks for being here, Taylor. And Fruitcake, thank you for always putting others first. Yeah, thank you for your service. Talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Hear 
something? Um, no. How about now? I don't hear anything. Exactly. It's so quiet. Oh, I can fix that. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Nate the Notebook with a message about connection. And our friend Fruitcake with tips on how to win the quiet game. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hello everyone, have we got a surprise for you. Since we always seem to somehow run out of time before Fruitcake gets to share, today he's going to guest host the episode. Yeah, go get him, Fruitcake. It's Coco Talk with today's host, Fruitcake. Go Fruitcake! Go Fruitcake! Uh, what's happening? Can't hear you, Fruitcake. We can't hear you. Your mic isn't working. What are you saying, Fruitcake? Maybe your mic is really quiet. Yeah, like uh, not working quiet. Oh, is this what quiet time is? No, that is on purpose. I'm not really sure what is happening here. We can't hear you, Fruitcake! Your mic might not be working. Maybe try turning it off and on? I can't, I can't hear you, dude. I guess Fruitcake will be right back. Sometimes you just need to step away. Even Jesus went off to be by himself to rest and pray. Jesus prayed? Oh yeah, Jesus spoke with his heavenly father a lot. He would go away so that he could have quiet time to connect with his dad. So quiet can be a good thing? Sometimes it's the best thing. Quiet time can help us focus and connect with God. Well, I'm not good at being still. Wait, can we do things to connect with God? Of course. The important thing is to slow down so you can focus on God. You can rest with God by reading about him in the Bible. You can also rest by drawing a picture, coloring, or writing. I do enjoy coloring. Who doesn't? Here's a clip of Nate having his quiet time. Oh, that looks like a peaceful spot. It sure does. Oh, I see the problem. I must have unplugged the microphone when I was using my hair dryer earlier. You use a hair dryer? Obviously. It works. I'm so sorry, Fruitcake. We're out of time. Thanks for being here, Nate. Appreciate you opening up and helping us out. Talk to y'all next time on Coco Talk. Quiet time. Quiet time. Painting or walking. Quiet time. Quiet time. Resting and gazing. Quiet time. Quiet time. Quiet time. Ooh, do you want to play hide and seek? Sure. I'll count while you hide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. Hmm, where is she? Aha! Wow, how'd you find me so quickly? You left a pretty clear path. <laughs> it's Coco Top! Today's guest, to reach the treasure map with a message about Bible reading and our friend Fruitcake with a scavenger hunt. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. Marsha, have you ever found a treasure? Not unless I count you. Aw oh, shucks, I think you're a treasure too. But seriously, I'm not good at finding things. Shoes, keys, Sunglasses, water bottles, beach balls, sleeping bags, the kitchen table. Well, Tariq here. Wait, how can you not find the kitchen table? Never mind, we're getting off track. Our guest today is an expert explorer and gem finder. It's Tariq the treasure map. Wow, what an adventure seeker. How does he know where to go to find the treasure? He practiced reading and following directions. That sounds hard. It is, but that's why he practiced just like we practiced reading the Bible to find Jesus. The Bible tells us how to find Jesus? It sure does. All scripture points us to Jesus, like a map leading to the greatest treasure. That is a total adventure I want to go on. Yep, Jesus is the best treasure we could ever find. Hey, we have a clip of the last treasure Tariq found. Wow. How does he find all that super sparkly special treasure? I think it's all that practice of reading maps and following directions that led to the right path. But let's ask, 
Tariq? Sounds like we couldn't find time. Sorry, Tariq. Thanks for finding your way here. And Fruitcake, we're looking forward to doing that scavenger hunt. We treasure you, Fruitcake. Talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Marsha says. Ooh, I do. Okay, be ready to follow my lead. Marsha says, clap three times. Marsha says, do jumping jacks. Is it too early to say I am winning? Marsha says, yes. Yes, it's too early. Now do a dance. <laughs> ha, Marsha didn't say, but Marsha did enjoy that. Coco says he got confused but he enjoyed the dancing. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Coach Whitney the Whistle! With a message about spiritual practices and our friend Fruitcake with thoughts on sportsmanship. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome everyone! How are we all doing today? Okay, thank you, but we need to get to our... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but now on to our show. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Whitney. Glad you're here, because today we're talking about spiritual practices. Wait, I have practice? Oh no, uh, Fruitcake, have you seen my soccer shoes? No, not soccer practice. Spiritual practices are things you do to focus on God, like reading the Bible, worshiping, and prayer. Oh! So do I still need to bring my own ball to spiritual practices? Or a helmet? Or anything? No. Well, sometimes your Bible. Uh, quick question. Why are we practicing? Well, why do you practice soccer? To learn the game and to train to become a super good, awesome, really good, really, really, really good star player. Exactly. Spiritual practices are meant to teach you about God and train you as a follower of Jesus. Do you like getting better at soccer? Yeah, that's why I keep practicing. And you know, practice makes progress. Same thing with spiritual practices. The more you practice, the more you grow. Wanna see what I've been learning at soccer practice? Sure. <whistles> oh, right. I forgot we were doing an interview for a second. We should probably get back to that. Yeah. Actually, a coach's whistle makes us pause, and spiritual practices help us pause to focus on God. That is a good reminder. Absolutely. Now, before we ask about her coaching strategy, let's watch a shot of Coach Whitney in action. Wow, she's very good at getting people to pause. Coach Whitney, tell us about... Oh, man, we're out of time already? Thanks for being here, Coach Whitney. And Fruitcake, you're always a good sport. We are practicing to get to you. And practice makes progress. Sure does. Talk to y'all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Are you almost ready? The show's about to start. Yes, almost. <clears throat> Is that really necessary? All the professionals do it. You're right. I do feel more ready. What else do you do to prepare? I put on my biggest smile. Like this? That's great. Now, now fix your hair. Oh, okay. Wait, I don't have any hair. <laughs> It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Naveen the New Shoes, with a message about the armor of God. And our friend Fruitcake with the history of armor. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome everyone! We have the coolest pair of kicks joining us today. The only new shoes we need, Naveen! He's here to talk about being prepared and ready for the day by putting on the armor of God. God has armor? Where can we buy some? No, the armor of God is not something you buy. They are spiritual symbols. In Ephesians, Paul says, Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, 
put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Oh, so it's not a real belt or a pair of shoes. That's right. They are symbols. We should be prepared with a shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. That sounds like a pretty powerful outfit. It is. When we ask God to make us ready for whatever comes our way, he equips us with what we need. And we have a surprise for you, Naveen. Your twin sister, Nava, is here. She even brought a picture of the day you were born. Aw, you guys are so cute. The perfect pair. You look like you're ready to take on the world. Okay, now I'm ready too, because this really is a powerful outfit. I got my truth belt, righteousness armor, peaceful shoes, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, and sword of the spirit. See, you can have confidence that you are ready for the day because you prepared yourself by putting on the armor of God. Agreed, but back to Nava and Naveen, how do you keep your colors so bright? Good question, how do you? Ah, oh, bummer. I really wanted to hear your answers. Thanks for being here and ready, Nava and Naveen. And Fruitcake, the history of armor sounded awesome. Yeah, just like how our history with you is awesome. Talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Talk. first letter? Um, A? Uh, that's right, that's right, yeah. The first letter of the ABCs is A. Uh, then, uh, what's the second letter again? B. Yes, yes, A, B. C. I was getting there, it's A, B, C. I did it. I recited my ABCs. What about the rest of the letters? There's more to the ABCs than just A, B, C. <laughs> it's Coco Top. Today's guest, Brighten the bread with a message about the Lord's Prayer. And our friend Fruitcake with friendly talking tips. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone. Today, Brighten the Bread is here to share about the Lord's Prayer. Which one? The Lord's Prayer. Uh, the Lord Jesus prayed a lot. Yes, but there was one prayer he prayed to teach the disciples how to pray. It goes like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. What does hallowed mean? It means honor, like to show respect. Oh, so we start by honoring God's name. Exactly. Then it goes, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wait. Like a castle kind of kingdom? No, it's saying we know that God is the ruler of all, even on earth. He has power over everything, and because he is good and loving, we can trust him. Yeah, I love that he hears us when we pray. He hears us and he answers what is best for us. Then we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Like Brighton. Yep. This reminds us that God provides exactly what we need each day. After that, we ask and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Debt or what? Is this part of the prayer about money? No, debtor. It's about forgiveness. Jesus is the best example of forgiving people. He sure is. The rest of the prayer is, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Ooh, the evil one? That sounds scary. We don't have to be scared because God is watching over us. <sighs> that is good. Oh, I just remembered that I made something to remind me of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Wow. Did you add that last part in? I'm not familiar with that ending. Coco, I can't believe you don't know this prayer. I do know it. We just went over... Never mind. Let's ask Brighton about... Is it really time to wrap up already? Thanks for being here, Brighton. And Fruitcake, we so wanted to hear your tips on talking. Or really just to hear you talk in general. I bet you have a beautiful voice. Talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Hey Coco, 
I have a new segment for the show. It's called Fruit Facts. Want to see it? Sure. Fruit Facts. Did you know that apple in Spanish is manzana? I did not know that. That's cool. Fruit Facts. And apples grow on trees and orchards. Well, yes, I did know that. Fruit Facts. Also, apples make the best pie. That's not really a fact. Fruit Facts. Wait. Did you only get as far as apple in your fruit fact finding? Yep. Did you know that apples come in all shades of red, green, and yellow? It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Freddie the Fruit Cup, with a message about the fruit of the spirit and our friend Fruitcake sharing his family tree. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone! Fruitcake's cousin, Freddy the Fruit Cup, is here today. Looking forward to seeing that family fruit tree. You know what they say. No, what? Fruit families love each other bunches. They are a sweet family. Speaking of fruit, we're talking about the fruit of the spirit today. Fruit is my favorite. But what's the fruit of the spirit? They're character traits we grow in when we live by the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's a lot of fruit. It is. There are many ways people can see God in us. Fruit is faith made visible. So people will know that we have the Holy Spirit by our actions? Exactly. Others will see that we're connected to God and living by the Spirit through how we act. Just some fruit for thought. I see what you did there. So what does the fruit of the Spirit look like? Well, for example, kindness can look like sharing with others. Love can be using encouraging words, and patience can look like waiting your turn. Waiting my turn. Oh, I can do that. So now's it my turn? Not yet. So to recap. Now's it my turn? Almost. So to recap, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Mm-hmm. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You really picked that up fast. It's always more catchy in a song. Love, joy, peace, patience. and it's going to be stuck in my head all day. You are welcome. We have a clip of Freddy during harvest season. Wow, what an exciting time. I wonder how long harvest is. Let's ask. Freddy, how long does it take to grow? Oh man, we're out of time already. Thanks for being here, Freddy. And Fruitcake, appreciate you sharing the stage with family. I still don't think they look alike. We don't really look alike either. You don't think so? Talk to y'all next time on Coco Talk. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh yeah. About how awesome I am? I don't think it's working. Let's try again. Ready? You're hungry. You did it. You read my mind. Nah, you're always hungry. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Tessa the Text Bubble, with a message about prayer. And our friend Fruitcake with tips on writing letters. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome, everyone. I'm really excited to talk to our guests today. You say that about all our guests. It's true, but today's guest loves to talk to and listen to people. Boy, do I know some people who love to talk. I guess you could consider me someone who loves to talk. I do have a talk show. Exactly. And you do love to talk and talk and talk and talk on your talk show. Yes, I do. And on today's show, we're talking to Tessa the Text Bubble about prayer. She knows about prayer? Yeah. In the same way we talk to God in prayer, Tessa helps people talk and listen to each other by sending messages. Ooh, I wonder what her favorite message is. Let's ask her. Thanks for joining us, Tessa. What's your favorite message? Aw, same here. How do you feel about helping people talk to each other? Ooh, 
If you could have any food right now, what would it be? You're still hungry, aren't you? You bet I am. Hmm. Seems like she's taking a while here. It looks like she's thinking. Who? She really is thinking. You're really keeping us on the edge of our seats over here. This reminds me of how it can feel when we pray. God always listens when we talk to him. Sometimes, though, we have to wait patiently for God to respond in his timing. God can really listen to everyone who talks to him? Yes. The Bible says the Lord is close to all who pray to him. So anyone can pray to God? Absolutely. All you have to do is talk to him. Prayer is a conversation. Good thing I can really talk. Maybe I could be a better listener, though. Speaking of listening, I can't wait to hear what Tessa's favorite food is. All of those foods sound delicious. Actually, right before meals is a great time to talk to God in prayer, like at Thanksgiving. I think we have a shot of last year's feast. Wow, and I thought I was hungry before. Tessa, what is your favorite time to talk to God? Oh man, we're out of time. Thanks again for being here, Tessa. It was great talking with you. And Fruitcake, send us one of your letters. Talk to y'all next time on Coco Talk. love Christmas music. We should sing a song to open the show. It's got to be quick. Which one should we do? Jingle bells? No. Oh, Holy Night? Too high. Deck the halls. Yeah. Ready? Deck. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, a candle with a message about Advent and our friend Fruitcake with a Christmas stunt spectacular. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. It's Advent season, everyone. And you know, I love events. No, not events, Advent. You know what Advent is, right? One of those metal things in the wall that blows out air? No, that's an air vent. I'm saying Advent. So, two metal thingies. Advent is the season before Christmas. Every Sunday, we light a new candle to get us ready for the day Jesus was born. One candle for hope, one for love, one for peace, and one for joy. And it just so happens that today, one of our guests is an actual Advent what? candle. Which one is it? Don't tell me. It's peace. Right? No, wait. Joy. Are you Joy? You have to tell me. Oh, wait. First, we have a clip. I'm guessing that's you, Joy. Or Hope. Your Hope. Look, fire. Speaking of fire, I'm burning to talk to our guest today. Let's not wait any longer. Oh no, we've run out of time. My apologies too. I want to say peace. Definitely peace. And fruitcake, so sorry. We didn't get to you again. We'll make it happen. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco, Coco Talk. Talk. thing this week? What was up with that, right? Incredible. I mean, things, right? We should have written some jokes for this part. Probably. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Lily Lightbulb, with a story behind an old tradition. And our friend Fruitcake is here to sing a Christmas opera. Now our hosts, Coco and Welcome, everybody. We're so excited to have Lily Lightbulb on the show today. Marsha, did you know that before light bulbs like Lily existed, people used to put candles on their trees? That sounds wildly dangerous. Agreed. That's why Christmas lights are the best. All the magic of Christmas. Electrified and safe, colorful, blinky lights. Seeing Christmas lights sends me back to my childhood. 
their warm glow outside the window, the sound of my dad attempting to unravel them from an impossibly tangled ball in the garage, the security of knowing our tree isn't decorated with open flames. Amen! But what they really remind me of is all the stars that were shining bright in the sky above Jesus the night he was born, and how he's the true light of the world for us, forever. I don't think any light bulbs last forever. Do they? You know what? Why don't we just ask our guests? Everyone, Lily the Light! Well, Jingle Bells, looks like we have run out of time. Much like Lily will one day. Sorry about that, Lily. We'll get to you next time. And Fruitcake, wow, I feel terrible. Once again, we did not make it to you at all. Yeah, our bad on that one, pal. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Talk. Talk a lot? Uh... It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Hannah Bell, here on behalf of her choir, and our friend Fruitcake with a must have Christmas recipe. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome, everyone! Did I not silence my phone? Your phone is ringing. This is embarrassing. Hello? Marsha? Is that you? Hi, Coco! Cool ringtone. Thanks. But that's not all that's ringing today. We have a very special guest. Annabelle is here. Ooh, what kind of bell is she? Jingle bell? Sleigh bell? Cowbell? Annabelle is a handbell. She's part of the handbell choir. I want to hear them. Well, we do have a special sneak peek from their brand new Christmas album. Let's play it now. Is that Annabelle? Or that one? Or that one? Huh, maybe not that one. I think that one. Maybe that one. I can't tell. Wow, her choir is so talented. You know, Marsha, this reminds me of the church. Just like Annabelle is one special part of her choir, we all have our own special gifts to use for God as part of something bigger. Yeah, we all make up his church. That's so beautiful, just like the song. Also, I'm pretty sure Anna had the solo in the middle. Like, 99% sure. Well, there's only one way to find out. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Annabelle. We've run out of time again. Too bad you aren't an alarm bell, Anna. Am I right? Maybe so. Anna, so sorry about that. And Fruitcake, I don't know what to say, man. I was really looking forward to hearing that Christmas recipe of yours. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Are we gonna practice ice skating? Or falling down real hard? I'm okay. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Bob Bobble, on the art of tree decor. And our friend, Fruitcake, with some last minute gift ideas. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hang on! Branches, everyone. We've got a very special ornament today that's a member of the Bobble family. I love bobbleheads. I guess I'm kind of your bobblehead. Even when you stay still, I can swirl the round and round. I'm not a bobblehead. A bobble is usually a round glass ornament like Bob here. Bobble, 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 bobble. Bobbles are just one type of ornament. There's also cross stitch ones, popsicle stick ones, even pickles. Pickles? Yeah, believe it or not. Parents used to hide a glass pickle ornament in their tree for kids to find on Christmas Day. Was it like a special pickle? Just a pickle. Could it sing and dance? Doubt it. 
But what I love about ornaments is that they can remind us of God's great gifts throughout our lives. Like family memories, which apparently, depending on your family, may or may not involve people. Speaking of family, we have a special surprise for Bob here. Bob's whole extended family live on video. There's your Uncle Rob, Cousins Bob, Bertie, Bobby, Robbie, Auntie Roberta, Grandpa Robert, and Denise. A lot of Bobs in there. I wonder if it's a family name. Great question. Let's ask. Oh, Tannin Bomb, we almost got there. Why do we always get ourselves into this pickle? Bob, thanks for hanging around with us. And Fruitcake, I just want you to know I see you and I know you're there. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. I can't get that song out of my head. In Excel, she is gay. Oh, has it been you this whole time? Yes. Do you want to hear my guitar solo? It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Three Top Angel, bringing good tidings of great joy. And our friend Fruitcake reading a chapter from his new book, For Goodness Cake. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Today's show is going to be amazing! We are so, so, so excited to have Tree Top Angel with us today. Wow, living on top of a Christmas tree. I wonder if she's ever been scared of heights. Scared? Like the shepherds were when the real angels declared the birth of Jesus? Shepherds were scared? Remember in Luke 2 when the angel said, Do not be afraid. Oh, right. And then they said, <clears throat> Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And then a whole bunch more angels showed up. Oh yeah, I'd love to see that. Well, why don't we? Let's go to a clip. All right, they didn't have cameras back then. That's okay, I can reenact it. Cue the lights. Hey, look at me, I'm a shepherd. Do, 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 do. Just doing shepherd stuff. No surprises in store for me today. Boom, angels. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. And shepherds were like, what? They were probably totally like that. And then the shepherds were like, let's go run and tell everyone we see about Jesus. We can get there faster if we take the helicopter. I don't think the shepherds had a helicopter. You sure? Pretty sure. But why don't we ask our friend? Everyone, please welcome Treetop Angel. Oh no, we ran out of time. Sorry about that, Treetop Angel and Fruitcake. Man, I really thought this was our day. Well, I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Marsha, there's flowers in the studio. Isn't it great? Ah, spring flowers make everything feel fresh and new. They also make for a fun game of Marsha Coco. Marsha. Coco. Marsha. Coco. Marsha. Coco. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest. A family of prawns with a message about Easter. And our friend Fruitcake with tips for finding hidden eggs. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha. It's Palm Sunday, everyone. Time for a parade. A parade? Ooh, I love parades. Confetti, floats, candy. Well, there's no candy on Palm Sunday. But when Jesus entered Jerusalem, everyone waved big palm branches. Were the palm branches made of candy? I don't think so. But palm branches are a sign of royalty. And Jesus was, and still is, the King of Kings. And guess what? Today, we have actual palm branches in the studio. The Frond family is here. 
The friend family? The frond family. I think you're saying friend funny. Our friends are a family of fronds. A palm frond is the same thing as a palm branch. Oh, so where is this friendly frond family from? Florida. Here's a clip. Wish I could wave like that. Maybe they can teach us. Let's ask. Oh man, we're out of time already? Appreciate you being here, Franz. And Fruitcake, we're pretty fond of you too. I see what you did there. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. I can't go on. You know what they say, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the cocoa. Now that's much better. <laughs> it's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Ivan the Ice Water with a message about living well. And our friend Fruitcake with tips for beating the heat. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome! Ivan the Ice Water is our super cool guest today. Right, Marsha? Marsha? Ah. Hey there, fellow uh, floaty. Not super talkative, is he? There's nothing as refreshing as ice water on a hot day. I love ice water, but it's nothing compared to sparkling water and definitely doesn't measure up to living water. You mean water that talks? No, living water is what Jesus offered to the woman at the well. Did she drink it? Not exactly. You don't actually drink the kind of water Jesus offered her. He knew what the woman really needed was eternal life that comes when we have faith in him. Eternal? That's like forever. Exactly. Refreshing water forever sounds amazing. Before we dive in with Ivan, we have footage of some really big ice water in his homeland. Now that's a floaty. Let's find out more about how Ivan handles the heat. Oh man, we're out of time already? Thanks for chilling with us, Ivan. We should get you out of here before you melt. And fruitcake, we're sorry again. But you always keep it fresh. Talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Um, Marsha, what are you doing? I'm practicing impressions. You mean you can sound like other people? Cool. Who can you do? Well, you, Coco. Really? I'd love to hear it. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Coco, a blue mug with a delightful, hilarious, quick-witted marshmallow co-host. That's pretty good. Who else can you do? I can do the announcer. Listen. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Sammy the Slingshot to discuss the importance of accuracy. And our friend Fruitcake with a family recipe for shepherd's pie. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hello everyone, we are super excited for today's show. Sammy the Slingshot is here. Do you know who she reminds me of? David Slingshot. Like the David Slingshot? Yep, David the Shepherd who became David the King. His Slingshot. Oh, that's so old school. Not to mention Old Testament. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the next guest on the show was the rock who flew out of the Slingshot and hit Goliath? We tried to book him. He's on tour with his rock band. So he's a rock star? Get it? David was another kind of rock star. He was outsized by Goliath and faced him with nothing but a slingshot, a stone, and faith that God would win. And he did. Wow. So it didn't matter that Goliath was bigger because God was on David's side. Nothing really matters because you have God on your side. 
Here's a reenactment. I wonder if slingshots ever get dizzy spinning round and round and round and round and round. Great question. Why don't we ask? <laughs> Out of time so soon? Well, Sammy, we have to swing back to you. And fruitcake, Marcia and I were really wanting to have that shepherd's pie for dinner. Wait, what are we having for dinner now? No idea. But we'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Oh no. Marsha, what exactly is all over the floor? Beads. They are all the rage. And when I heard we had beads on the show, I wanted them to feel at home. We have bees on the show. That's what I said. Bees. Not beads. Bees. You know, honey. Got it, honey. Sweetie pie. It's Coco Talk. Today's guests are a couple of bees with a message about the Beatitudes and our friend Fruitcake on flower decorating. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're talking about Beatitudes. Yep, bees who have attitude, right? <laughs> Totally. Wow, you can speak B? I guess I do. Will you ask them about the Beatitudes? Is that a B band? Never heard of them. What's the buzz? No, in the Bible, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about how we can be. The Beatitudes are like opposites. <laughs> like smiley and frowny, daytimey and nighttimey, hot cocoa and cold cocoa. More like when sad things happen, you can be happy because God will comfort you. Oh. It's about choosing to be joyful, well, which is what God wants for us. Even when something is hard? That sounds backwards. I know, opposites. Before I forget, we have footage of the bee's beautiful handiwork. Sweet! I'll say. How long did it take you to make? <laughs> Interesting. What did they say? <laughs> oh man, left on a cliffhanger. Well, thanks for being here, friends. And Fruitcake, we really wanted to hear about your new flower decorating hobby. Talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. It's winter, my favorite time of the year. I thought summer was your favorite. Sunshine and swimming pools. That is pretty great too. Or spring with beautiful flowers blooming and celebrating Easter. I do love Easter. Or fall with all the colorful leaves and nice cool weather. Wow, there are so many great seasons. How do you even pick a favorite? You know you don't have to choose, right? Oh, phew. It's Coco Talk! Today's guests, a snowball on behalf of the snow community. And our friend Fruitcake with a snow angel demonstration. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Well, welcome. We froze in the studio today for our guest, Sunny the Snowball. Pretty cold for a sun, aren't you? Can I call you Sun, Sunny? Sunny? Sunny is a snowball. Did you know that snowballs are made out of thousands of individual snowflakes? When they're all packed together, they form a strong bond. Wow, that's amazing. It's like the Bible says, <clears throat> a group of snowflakes is not easily broken. I think it says a rope of three strands is not easily broken. A rope of three strands? You mean like a braid? Yeah, like a braid. The point is, a community is also stronger together. What's a community? It's a group that shares something in common, like a neighborhood, school, or church. Like me, you, and Fruitcake. 
I'm glad you guys are my community. Back at you, Marsha. Before we hear from Sonny, let's take a look at his home community. That's a good looking community. It really warms your heart. Maybe winter is the best time of the year, along with spring, summer, and fall. Before we freeze, let's ask our snowy friend. What do you think the best season is? Oh no, ran out of time again. Thanks for being here, Sonny. Sorry we didn't get to hear from you. And Fruitcake, I really did want to see your snow angel demonstration. Yeah, that would have been cool. Or, you know, cold. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Hey everyone, we're glad you're here. It's the most wonderful time of the year. At Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birth. The day our Savior came to Earth. We've got a great show for you today. Miss Announcer, take it away. Meow. Meow. Hmm, maybe more like, meow. What are you doing? Getting ready to talk to our guests, the kittens. Not kittens, mittens. Mittens? Fluffy and Muffy are a pair of mittens. Huh. Do they also speak cat? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> it's Coco Talk! Today's guests, a pair of mittens with a message about accountability. And our friend Fruitcake with fashion tips for your winter wardrobe. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Welcome! We're talking to Fluffy and Muffy Mittens today about being a good team. A dynamic duo. A perfect pair. Partners in crime. Well, not crime. But they are accountability partners. What's an accountability partner? It's someone who holds you responsible for your actions. Like how it's not good to fill up on cookies before dinner, and the other day you reminded me to only have one cookie? Exactly. We look out for each other. In the Bible, Paul says to encourage one another and build each other up. So are we accountability partners? Yeah, I guess we are. Then I should tell you, I'm responsible for eating the last cookie yesterday. I knew it! But we're getting off topic. We usually have a clip, but I really wanted to make sure we get to our guest today. What's it like for you two to look out for each other? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding you. Hmm, maybe we should move on to fruitcake. Okay, fruitcake, what would you like to add? Oh man, we were so close to finally getting an interview. Thanks for being here, Mittens. And fruitcake, we almost got to you. And I really wanted to hear your winter fashion tips. Yeah, Coco could have used them. I sure could. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, dear Coco. Happy New Year to you. That was great. Now it's your turn. My turn to what? To sing Happy New Year to me. Um, I don't think that's a thing most people do. Please. Okay. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, a New Year's ball with the story of Paul. And our friend Fruitcake bringing a word about fresh starts. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome everyone! We have Ned the New Year's ball here who drops from a skyscraper to ring in the new year. Wow, what a way to celebrate new beginnings. Speaking of new beginnings, Ned is here to tell us about Paul. He was a guy in the Bible who made a lot of bad choices, but then he met Jesus and was never the same. Wait, wasn't that guy's name Saul? Actually, his name 
was Saul, but after he met Jesus, his name was changed to Paul. In the Bible, new beginnings often came with a new name. So, if a new year is like a new beginning, do I need to change my name every January? I've always wanted something totally different, like Martha, or maybe Monica. Nah, how about Maria? No need to change your name, but the Bible says when we meet Jesus, we get to start over too. Sweet, like a do-over. Yeah. Did you know after Paul's new beginning, he ended up writing most of the New Testament? I knew he sounded familiar. Before we hear from Ned, I thought we could do a New Year's Eve style countdown. Count me in. Ten, nine, eight, seven, I'm so excited. Six, me too. Five, four, three, two. Fun. Let's do it again. No, we need to get to our guest. All right. So Ned, what do new beginnings mean to you? I should have known the countdown would cue the music. Thanks for being here, Ned. And Fruitcake, we really would have loved to hear your take on Fresh Starts too. Happy New Year, everyone! We'll see you all next time on Coco Talk. Marsha, what are you doing? Spring cleaning. Where'd you even get this stuff? Oh, here and there. I've never seen you wear any of it. Well, for some reason, floating around in hot cocoa all day, I never get cold. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Stone, the Super Slam Rockwell, with a message about miracles. And our friend Fruitcake with exercise tips. Now, our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Happy Easter, everyone. Before we get to our hard-hitting interview, Stone the Super Slam Rockwell has challenged me to see if I can roll him over. Ooh, what do you get if you move him? I get to pick the music for the end of the show. But if I can't roll him over, then he chooses one of your songs? Do you really have your own music? Oh yeah, rock and roll. Amazing. Okay, let's do this. Are you ready to roll, Fruitcake? Okay, in three, two, one. like a challenge. It is. I can use a miracle right about now. Oh, oh, you know what you remind me of, Mr. Stone, the Super Slam? C can I call you just Stone? You remind me of the big stone they put in front of Jesus' tomb when they buried him after he died on the cross. It was really hard to move, too. But when Jesus' friends went to see him, the stone was rolled away. <clears throat> How did they move it? Asking for a friend. They didn't move it. And if you think that's amazing, get this. Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> oh, that's right. The Bible says Jesus' friends found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they looked inside, they didn't find him there. Yep, Jesus had risen. That was the biggest miracle. He was alive again and is still alive today. That is amazing. You think you're amazed? After Jesus' friends left, they saw him walking along the road. They were so surprised. Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. Are you okay? Maybe we should roll to a clip. Oh, right. Rolling! Whoa, you're really rolling. That's rock and roll if I ever saw it. Looks like we'll be hearing that Marsha song after all, Mr. Stone. Tell us, what's the secret for getting you to roll? Oh man, we're out of time. Thanks for being here, Stone the Super Slam. And Fruitcake, appreciate you reffing. We really wanted to hear about your exercise routine. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my song? Planet, Marvel, Fortnite.